welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer using the stroke and pressure curve to create leaves in a quick and easy way. In this video I'll create a plant similar to this one based on leaves that are a straight line with a slight curve and then a pressure curve adjustment that makes the shape of the leaf. I use a gradient for the color. The gradient is the same for all leaves, it's just the placement of the gradient that makes the leaves in the back look darker than the leaves in the front. For the cutout circles I use the layer blend mode erase, seeing the stroke does not react to boolean operations. And for the vein in the center I use a duplicate with a changed pressure curve. Looking at the design in the outline mode shows that it's fairly simple, a lot of lines and very few shapes. Let's start with the line. I use the pen tool because it allows for less nodes, which makes it easier to edit than lines done with the pencil tool. I adjust the stroke width and then go into the pressure curve. You click on the line to open the pressure curve panel and then you have the nodes to edit. I lower both nodes first and if you move the side nodes on their own they usually are locked so both of them move. Hold the Alt key and you can move them independently or click on one of the nodes until it changes its color. The look of the leaf changes dramatically with the width of the stroke so if I adjust the width to really thin or really thick it makes the leaf look very different even though the pressure curve is the same. For the color I'm using the gradient tool, set it to stroke rather than fill and choose my color. In this case I'm going from a deep purple to a pink with a few shades in between. Using the node tool I curve and extend the leaf, making duplicates as I go to create some different shapes. When scaling with the move tool the stroke gets changed so I go into the stroke panel and turn the scaling with object off because I want the leaves to look somewhat consistent. By enabling the origin transform I can change the pivot point and rotate shapes at the base. I adjust the order of the layers bringing the smaller leaves forward and the larger ones to the back. Duplicating is the fastest way to create new shapes, so I duplicate a lot. And now I just go in and adjust the curves with the node tool. That way the leaves look slightly different, more organic and not like a copy of the same leaf. For the very front I change the pressure curve slightly to have less of a stem and more of a leaf. Using the gradient tool set to stroke again I can then alter the shading of the different leaves by moving the start and end point of the gradient. That way I can make the different shapes more visible. Next I create the stem in the center of the leaf. I duplicate all shapes and alter the pressure curve. These lines just need to taper towards one end and they don't need quite as big a width so I reduce the width of those as well and set the layer and blend mode to multiply. Finally I go in with the transparency tool and fade some of those stems towards the bottom. Seeing boolean operations don't work with lines I use circles and a layer blend mode set to erase so I create a few circles and then select all of them and set the layer blend mode to erase. It goes all the way through to the background. I group those circles with the leaf shape to limit the effect to just that shape. I repeat that effect with a few other leaves, copying the erased circles into a group so they just affect the leaves I want them to affect.
Next up is a bit more shading. I start with a shadow underneath the plant, a simple circle set to multiply and 50% opacity, given a Gaussian blur to be smooth on the outside and a duplicate in a slightly smaller size on top. To add shading to the leaves, I duplicate a leaf shape and expand the stroke. Layer, expand the stroke, turning it into a shape and setting that to multiply. I use the node tool and delete the nodes on one side. Holding the Alt key while you modify node angles makes the node a sharp turn so it stays in line with the shape of the leaf below. I repeat the process for a few leaves to make it look more interesting. It can happen that the expanded shape is not in line with the stroke below. Usually happens when there is an extreme curve in the line below. With the note tool you can go in and adjust that. So in this case I'll just zoom in and fix the bottom line there. See how the shape does not quite correspond with the line underneath. At this stage I would call the design done. Looking at the outline view you can see the simplicity of this design. There's a lot of lines, a few shapes and they all make a rather interesting looking plant. In summary we have the base shape made of the stem which has a shallow pressure curve, the main shape which has the leaf shape pressure curve that expands and has the thinner ends. We have the arrays for the holes, which are plain circles. You can go more intricate there if you want. And the gradient for the coloring. Again, it's just one gradient. You can work with more. Rather than change the gradient, you could change the colors by using adjustment layers. So if I go in and add an HSL layer, I can move the color spectrum and change the U, change the saturation, change the luminosity. I can also create depths by changing the luminosity for the object behind or if I want a more intricate shading I go with a color overlay effect or use a gradient overlay to shade the object behind to make it look darker than the object in the front. Working with the pressure tool is always good fun and a rather quick way to create interesting shapes, especially when you need them bent, curled or curved. So play around with it, have some fun with the tool. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, leave a like, click on the notification and I will see you again soon.